So array views are tremendously helpful in keeping your code generic and able to use multiple types. So look here, we have a T array of n32s, and I'm initializing that to some values. This is going to allocate its memory on the heap while the array itself is on the stack. It has a heap allocated array backing it. We can also have a T array of integers with the T inline allocator, which inlines the memory wherever the array is. And so this array is on the stack. That means this is going to put the memory on the stack rather than the heap like the regular T array. And we've allocated three elements there so that we don't go past what we've allocated in line. We also have a C style array. So that is going to initialize to four values and this will be an array on the stack. And so we have these three different types of ways of looking at a sequence of values. And the T array view can actually work with all of them. And so a T array view is a view on something that looks like an array. So we have a T array view of N32s and we assign that array view to the regular T array up here. And so if we inspect the array view, we can see that it has all the values that the T array has. Now, if we step over, we're about to assign the array view to the custom stack allocator T array. Now, if I look at that, I can see the memory is 11, 22, and 33, which comes from right here. So we have changed our array view to look at a different array. Now, if I step over, I'm going to assign our array view to the C array. And you can see it has a sequence of values that is associated with that C array. Now, the array view isn't allocating the memory. It is using the underlying memory of these behind the scenes. So we're not making copies or whatever. It's very cheap to create a T array view of an array. And we can for loop over our T array view. And so if we go to the output, you can see our array view printed all the values that were associated with the C array because that was the last thing we assigned it to. The nice thing about a array view is that you can pass it through functions generically. And so the accumulate could work with the T array or it could work with an array view. And so if we step over that, it sums the values in the C array. And the algo function had no idea that this was a C array versus a regular T array versus a special allocator array type. And it can even help you. So let's say that you're writing a function that takes an array and just for simplicity, I'll write it as a lambda here. So this could be a function, but it's a lambda, which is very similar to a function. So when you're writing a function, you write the parameters that the function takes and then the function body. And so if we write a parameter that takes a T array, that works fine. We can call accumulate on the T array and then return the sum. The problem though, is that this is very specific to the type T array. Well, specific to a const T array ref. So while we can call that with our regular T array up here, we actually can't call that with our custom allocator T array or our C array because those are not this type. The custom allocator stack array has this as part of the type and the C array just has a completely different looking type. It has nothing to do with T array. And so writing functions where the API specifies a T array is rather limiting. However, what you can do is write your functions instead of providing T array, provide a T array view. Now this is much more dynamic and the T array view takes in a T array view instead of a T array. And what's cool is that this constructs automatically. So we pass in the regular T array and convert it to a T array view and it was able to call our function. If we go to our locals, we can see that one return 21. We can also pass in our custom alligator with the T inline allocator. And we can see our, our lambda returned 66 for that one. And we can also pass in a plain old C array, which is a completely different API, and it returned the sum of the C array. And so array views are way more flexible than specifying T array. You will run into some potential issues with Blueprint, maybe, but if you're working mostly in code, then perhaps T array view is something you should consider. However, there are some restrictions with using a T array view. T array views have fixed sizes. So the C array we can't add to that array. So if you're using a T array view, you can't do things like add an additional thing to it. It's just not part of the specification of a T array. You can modify the values in a T array. So if our array view has an index zero, we can go to index zero and write this custom value to it, one, two, three, four, five. So that means we can do things like using algo reverse to reverse the elements of this array. 
we can do four reaches with them. So you can modify the contents within the array, but you can't change the array view size. So there's some other caveats, like, for example, let's say we have a T-array that is immutable. So there's nothing constant about this T-array. It's a mutable T-array and the values are mutable. Let's say we wanted to make an array view where we couldn't change the array contents. So we wanted a int32, but we wanted that to not be mutable. So you might think, well, let's make a const T-array view of int32 and assign that to our mutable array. But the const is not propagating. Our const but mutable view, we can take index 0 and write 101 to it. So we had 1, and now we have 101 there. And even in the underlying array, because it's just referencing the actual memory, it's 101. So that is not how you write a const array view. If you want the elements to be const, what you do is specify that it's a const element. And so we can assign to our mutable array. You might think this would cause a compiler error, but it doesn't. So we can assign an array view to our mutable array. And now our array view has const elements and can't be overwritten. So for example, if we tried to write to zero, that would be a compiler error now because it is a const in 32. Even though the backing is a mutable array, this allows you to write function parameters that take a const view so that you can be const correct with your functions. There are some other things to consider when using a T array view. So below is not safe code. It is going to invoke undefined behavior, but I have enabled that here. So we can demo it. And so let's create a T array view to a temporary array. So this is bad in that the, this is an R value. This is a temporary value. The memory is going to go away immediately after. The array view is referencing some memory that is no longer valid. So that T array is now gone. I've stepped over, but we can still use the unsafe array view. So you can see the values are kind of garbage now. So the unsafe view element zero has this huge negative number, whereas this should have been a one. But we were able to read the value and it's completely wrong. We didn't crash. This is undefined behavior. This is extremely dangerous, um, especially if working with pointers, like an array of objects, because now that object doesn't point to anything real and can crash the game. So. This is just something to watch out for, that the array view should not be assigned to a temporary. It needs to be backed to a real array, and that array needs to be allocated in memory and not removed from memory before the array view. So the array view should always go out of scope before the T-array goes out of scope. There are more dangerous situations with T-array views. So again, I'm, this is not good code. Don't write code like this, but I'm just demoing that it won't necessarily crash, even though it might later crash. So let's say we have a T-array of integers. And this is a proper T-Array. It is in memory, and the scope is going to last just as long as our T-Array view. And we assign our Array view to this Array. And I'm going to name it Unaware View, because the Array view, once it has been created, is unaware to changes to this modified Array. So I've named it Suspiciously Modified Array, because what we're going to do is not necessarily modify the elements in it, but we are going to remove from it changing the size of the Array. So the suspiciously modified array, I remove three from it. So now it has three elements. But if we look at our unaware array view, it still thinks there's four elements. Now we got lucky in that, or perhaps unlucky, that the last element is still the correct value, but it's really not proper behavior or perhaps even undefined behavior to try to access that element, which is no longer there. And so if we try and look at the array view num, it is the correct one. And you could try and access that last element blissfully unaware that it has been deallocated. So this could lead to really bad things like crashes or worse memory stomps. So you just need to be careful with array views and that you don't change the size of the array view while the array view is still in scope. Let that go out of scope and then modify your sizes by adding more or removing. And adding is dangerous. You might think, oh, I can just remove. As long as I don't remove and keep adding, then it'll be okay. But you have to remember that the array view might be pointing to a dynamically sizing array like T-Ray, which will cause a buffer resize. So the addresses could change. So again, removing or adding, make sure your array view goes out of scope and then do your changes in size before recreating a new array view.